Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the second video on budget impact analysis and health technology assessment. In this video, we're going to be talking about dynamic models of budget impact analysis. Let's go. So we want to think about budget impact analysis over time. How do we model this? We take our simple spreadsheet model from our previous video and we change our treatment mix. That's what's going to be happening. All these values are going to be chosen as opposed to being informed by say some objective problem as there is clinical considerations for treatments to use versus treatments to not use given our current understanding. Now, some features of these dynamic models will be as follows is that we're gonna require that in each period T, the fraction of the population using drug I sum to one. So over the sum total of all the different drugs on this menu of options there for a particular treatment, they're gonna go and sum to one. Uh, given this is a dynamic model, we also have population growth rates, G. So it's going to be assumed that this is a constant. And given a short time frame of most budget impacts, this is not an issue. In fact, some budget impact analyses even ignore this whole idea of there being a growth rate in our target population. For reasons that are not very well specified, in my opinion, and this is something to be very, very, very cognizant of, um, we do not apply a discount factor to our budget impact estimates or our incremental budget impact. Uh, this is because in an applied context, it is better to overestimate our budget impact than to underestimate it. Just to further iterate, we are suspending whatever theoretical understanding of what budget impact should be, right, with reference to present value. So this is what a dynamic model of budget impact goes and looks like. And this is what people would go and use uh, to go and estimating uh, this type of stuff. Um, we're going to have a set of different scenarios, right? Obviously, there are number of patients equations um, is going to be different uh, each time here um, because we're going to have this additive uh, growth rate that we go and we have one plus G here because we want to go and think about how this population is growing over time in the first period. Uh, it's just going to be n here because it's going to be exponented by zero and by uh year two and uh year three right it's going to be growing uh at that rate so it's just going to be compounding there now in each of these scenarios we're going to be going and having a different level of spending in each one of these scenarios and we're going to go and calculate that for each year so we're going to get these b uh 1 1 b 1 2 b 1 3 b 2 1 b 2 2 and b 2 3 uh terms that we go and we have here which is going to be the spending in each one of these scenarios at a particular year and from there we go and we calculate our incremental budget impact which is going to be one of these so we're going to get a series of things like this now in terms of going and uh visualizing uh your budget impact um you could go and compare two different scenarios directly um, sometimes they, uh, stakeholders would want to go and see what is the spending under one scenario versus another scenario. Other times they would want to go and think about just plotting the incremental budget impact. This chart is a little bit underwhelming, but this is what people go and use to go and present their results. So this is how you would go, at least conceptually, go and do a budget impact analysis in a dynamic uh, set up here again choosing all your choosing all your values and then computing um, to go and answer this type of question I hope this video helps and I hope it gives you a little bit more of a footing in the practice of budget impact analysis take care